So the first thing we're going to do is go through some safety precautions. Um, one is that you may be asked to wear gloves. Um, that's a professor choice or your TA or your teacher. Some individuals like you wearing gloves, others do not in terms of the lab. Um, the, the one thing that is required is pulling your hair back and wearing safety goggles. The safety goggles could be like these that do not have a complete seal or you might be required to wear full face goggles. The next thing is maybe you don't have gloves on and you get an acid or a base on your skin or other chemicals. You need to be close enough to a sink that you can go over and wash your hands with copious amounts of water. It's important to know the location of your uh, fire blanket. Now in a titration you probably won't need that. Um, but the most important thing is an eye wash and a safety shower and also uh, titrations involve a lot of glassware. So knowing where your broken glass container is and to have a broom and a dustpan to be able to pick up any glass, um, not with your hands. Last but not least, make sure that you always have pants, closed toed shoes, um, and that you follow directions and stay kind of what I call alert in lab um, because they will help you get through lab in a safe manner. So these are all the pieces of equipment you're gonna need in a standard titration that does not involve a pH sensor. Um, you will need an electronic balance, a weighing boat, and a scupula. That could be if you are going to use a solid acid, um, maybe potassium hydrogen phthalate called KHP is the most common example. That would then go into an Ullermeyer flask. The other thing that you'll need is you'll need a um, pipette pump and graduated pipette to measure a liquid uh, acid or base. In this case, we might measure the uh, volume of distilled white vinegar using a pipette pump and graduated pipette. The other option is to use a graduated cylinder, but you'd want that as accurate as you could. The next piece of equipment you're going to need is a burette clamp and a, a ring stand because you're going to need to clamp in this device called a burette. This is where your solution of known concentration or the standard goes. Um, or you might standardize the solution that you're putting in here. That's common with the KHP. Use a funnel to fill that um, burette so you don't spill. The next thing you're going to need is a variety of different size beakers to either be waste beakers or maybe they're going to contain your known solution or your unknown solution. You'll need an indicator if you're not using a pH sensor to let you know when you've reached the equivalence point. And last but not least, you can use distilled water to rinse down the outsides of the Erlenmeyer flask or the inside of this burette, or maybe even the inside of this pipette. The first step in a titration is to clean and prepare your burette. You need to make sure that before you add any solution into here or water that your stopcock is in the perpendicular position to the tip of the entire burette. The other thing is be very careful when you're moving the burette around that you're not hitting the top um, or the tip on any table or um, water faucets. The other thing is if you don't have a sink, you're going to want to have a waste beaker nearby to put all these rinsings into. So the first step again is make sure that that is in the what's called the off position. You're going to rinse down the inside of the burette with water. Um, you'll want to add about 5 to 10 milliliters of water. And then you're going to run that water through the tip. If it doesn't start dripping through, kind of give it a shake and it will end up coming out the bottom due to pressure. The other thing you can do is to turn this, again be very careful, and just tip it upside down into the sink. You'll want to do that um, a few times with water. The next step in a titration is to rinse the inside of your burette with the solution that's going to go in it. Um, typically it's the standard solution or the solution you're trying to standardize. In this case I'm using sodium hydroxide. Pour a small amount of that, maybe 20 mils, into a small beaker. Uh, make sure you cap that bottle. The next step is going to be making sure again that your stopcock is closed. And if you can rinse into a sink, you can do that. Or if you have to put your solution into a beaker, um, then use that. Um, you can use a funnel to fill, or you can try to pour directly from the beaker. I'll use a funnel. Pour about 5 to 10 mils into the burette. Rinse through the tip, make sure you're trying to remove any air bubbles. And again, if you had to ca capture this in a beaker, you could do that also. Um, so rinse through the burette tip. Take the burette and take it and make sure you don't hit anything, but you roll the solution to coat the entire inside of this burette. And then all of that will need to go into a waste beaker again or into the sink. 
And then you will need to repeat that two more times with two more rinsings of that standard solution. The next step in a titration is to take your solution of known concentration, the titrant, and pour some in a beaker. Uh, make sure that you don't pour too much more than 50 milliliters because the, the burettes typically hold 50 mils. And if you have too much in here and you pour it in, you may overfill the burette. If you're tall enough to fill the burette in, in the stand, in the burette clamp, then just pour it through um, at the top of the uh, funnel. If you're not tall enough, you may have to pull it off of the burette clamp, make sure you don't hit anything, and again, bring it down to your level, and take your solution that you're filling it up with, uh, make sure that that stopcock is closed, and if you're concerned, I would fill it over a sink and fill it slowly. If you're filling it in the burette stand, it's very important that you don't have any um, of, your, of your solution that you're trying to test underneath in case you do um, overfill. The other thing to watch out for is that you don't hit the bottom of the ring stand. So you can pour it in. Uh, if, you're, if you don't have to start the titration exactly at zero, what's best is going a little bit past the zero line on the burette. Take your funnel out and then grab that beaker that you had that you had your excess um, rinsed uh, solution in from this, the titrant. Put it underneath and again make sure that the tip is filled, there's no air bubbles inside. And that you have then gone below or at least at the zero. If you need to start the titration at zero, you'd have to very carefully make sure that you um, let enough of the solution out to begin your titration exactly at zero. So this is what I was talking about. There are bubbles actually trapped inside the burette tip. You have to again open up that and you may even have to tap to release those bubbles. You need the tip of this burette completely filled uh, before you start your titration. The next step of a titration is to record your initial volume before you start. Um, if you took the time to, get sh to make sure that that is exactly on zero, then you would record zero in your uh, lab book. If not, or on your lab paper, you would record the volume, you'd put some white paper behind it, and you'd read it at eye level. So for me, I would take this white paper and put it behind it and read the volume um, with my eyes directly at the level of that solution. And you'd read the bottom of the meniscus. So this is an example of if you had your meniscus exactly at zero. It's important that in your lab data that you record that it's 0.00. .00. This is an example of where your initial volume would not be starting at zero, and for most titrations that's fine unless you're doing a titration curve. The volume that this is at is 0.59 or 0.60. The big thing with a burette is that you need to make sure you read a hundredths place as an estimated digit. Again, you would record 0.59 or 0.60 milliliters as your initial volume in your lab data table. The next step of your titration is to prepare the uh, substance that you're trying to analyze. Um, it could be maybe a concentration of an unknown solution like the concentration of acetic acid and vinegar. Or you could be using um, a solid that you're trying to find, uh, the amount of, so you might mass it. Typically what you do first though is you do find the concentration of an unknown solution. So make sure that you have some of that solution that you're testing in a beaker. Um, and that you never take the excess of this putting it back into the original container. That's true for the solution that you're analyzing called the tie trend. It is also true for the solution that you know the concentration of. You'd never want to take any of the excess solution that you have and pour it back into these original bottles. So make sure those get put aside so that you don't use those. Um, the other thing is when you end up with a lot of beakers, you may want to label the beaker so you know what it is. It's very common in chemistry that all solutions are all um, typically clear and colorless. So on to the next step of getting our solution that we're analyzing called the tight trend into our Erlenmeyer flask. You can use a graduated cylinder um, and take your solution and pour a certain amount of it into a grad cylinder, whatever your teacher has asked you to measure. Record that volume in a, a data table and then pour that into your Ulmer flask. Or um, another option in case gr the grad cylinders you have are not very accurate, because typically they only read to one decimal place, you can use a pipette and a pipette pump. First step though is to take your pipette 
pump and pipette and rinse it with water. Um, similar to how you did the burette, you'll take that and you'll take that solution and um, in this case water and just roll it around in that pipette and either dump it into the sink or maybe that waste beaker that you had from before. And you'll need to do that a couple times, usually it's two or three times. Then you're going to need to go over to the solution that you're measuring, um, you're trying to find the, the concentration of, and you'll have to rinse your um, pipette the same way as the burette by having that solution go in there. Make sure it doesn't go up to the top here that sometimes has cotton up at the top. And rinse that out. Um, and again, you'll need to do this uh, about two or three times typically. So again, go back to the solution that you're trying to analyze and take that, have that solution end up rolling around to get that solution to coat the inside. And again, if you don't have a sink nearby, you'd end up putting it in a waste beaker. Then, similar to the burette, um, you need to again draw up a certain volume of that solution. Read the volume the same way you would read a uh, burette. You read the bottom of the meniscus, and in this case, most of these pipettes read to two decimal places the same way that the uh, burette does. Record that volume in your uh, data table as your initial volume of your type trend or what you're trying to find the solution's concentration of. So the next step is to transfer what you measured into your uh, Erlenmeyer flask. Be careful moving because air bubbles will go inside um, and you might lose some of your solution in the transfer process from here to here. So try to make that a short run between where your solution is being measured from and have your Erlenmeyer flask right next to that beaker so that you don't have to go too far. Then once you've got all that solution in the um, Erlenmeyer flask, you can then put that underneath the burette. You may have to take the burette and slide it up because again, you don't really want this tip to get smacked by the uh, Erlenmeyer flask and crack. Put that underneath so that part of the tip is actually facing into the solution. Um, and then the next step is to, usually you'll add some indicator. In this case, we're gonna add some phenolphthalein. Uh, because this is an acid, it'll stay clear, um, but once we start the titration, um, it'll show a, a bright pink color, and once that persists, the titration is over.